Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we'll be taking an up close and personal in depth look with the Campania V13R. In this review, we'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go for the performance data, take it on a thorough drive, and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start her up, let her run. Recently, I had the chance to spend an entire day with Campania, testing out both the T-Rex and V13R. As a novice to the world of motorcycles, the experience was especially memorable, as it's the closest thing I've come to it yet. Each vehicle follows a similar design philosophy. They each combine a high revving motorcycle engine with a manual transmission and an F1-inspired driving position. While the T-Rex is built to perform and handle like a proper sports car, the V13R, while still quite fast and agile, is an open top roadster that's more hot rod in nature, perfect for cruising. For those wanting more information on the T-Rex, I added a link to my review in the top right hand corner of this video. Founded in 1988, Campania Motors is a Canadian company based in Quebec, just outside of Montreal. The T-Rex has been their bread and butter since 1995, but it wasn't until 2001 that they were offered for sale in the US. The V13R was actually born under a different company called Sirbane Motors, who would eventually acquire the Campania brand in 2008. Launched in 2011, the V13R's closest competitors include the Polaris Slingshot, Morgan Three-Wheeler, and even perhaps the Can-Am Spider. It's powered by a 1,250cc Harley-Davidson Revolution V-Twin, otherwise known as the V-Rod. Designed in collaboration with Porsche, this motor introduces a whole different feel and behavior than the BMW 6-cylinder used in the T-Rex, making it a delightful experience with the senses. You can almost feel the cylinders firing thanks to the engine's signature sound and high-revving nature, especially because this one was fitted with an aftermarket exhaust system. It's loud, raspy, and unmistakably American in nature. Being that the engine sits right behind you, the sound is amplified tremendously. It develops 122 horsepower at 8,250 RPM and 85 pound-feet of torque at 7,000 RPM. It's an oil and water-cooled four-stroke engine with two overhead camshafts, four valves per cylinder, and a compression ratio of 11.5 to 1. Cooling is provided by a large car radiator that sits ahead of the engine, right behind the rear seat bulkhead. Being that the whole vehicle weighs around 524 kilograms, or 1,156 pounds, it's able to rocket to 60 miles an hour in about 5.6 seconds, and accelerate to a top speed of 122 miles per hour. Even though it's not as powerful as the T-Rex, you still feel like you're flying by the seat of your pants as the wind blows through your hair. After all, you're only about 4.5 inches off the ground. I said that the T-Rex was the most fun thing on wheels I had driven up to that point, but the V13R is right up there as well, although for slightly different reasons. The T-Rex 16S performance is ridiculously quick, but the V13R has more of an aggressive and visceral nature to it that I can't help but love. There's no drive modes or any features whatsoever to take your mind off the road, just a small instrument cluster and a 12 volt power outlet. Power is harnessed by a 5-speed sequential manual gearbox before being sent to the rear wheel through a belt-driven final drive. A lot of the parts are sourced directly from Harley-Davidson. It works by a blend of conventional automotive and motorcycle technology. Like a normal car, there's a clutch pedal and a console shift lever, but when it comes to changing gears, pulling the lever towards you upshifts while pushing it forward downshifts. Neutral is between first and second gear. It's pretty straightforward once you figure out the grab point and ideal takeoff RPM. Campania also designed a custom reverse gear so you're able to back out of parking spaces with ease. Unlike the electronically controlled reverse gear used on the T-Rex, the V13R uses a mechanical lever in the center console just ahead of the shifter. To engage, you would simply pull the lever upward while in first gear and push it back down to take it out of reverse. An entry model V13R before options starts at $54,000, about four grand less than a standard T-Rex 16S. 
With all of the options, a loaded example can easily reach the low $60,000 range. The V13R features a fully adjustable coilover suspension with independent double wishbones in front and a custom designed swing arm out back. You pretty much feel everything in the road and it's nearly impossible to miss a pothole with a single wheel out back, but it's notably forgiving over rough surfaces, maintaining a sporty feel without being punishing. With the chassis design, low center of gravity, weight distribution, and the suspension, I'd estimate the V13R can hold over 1G of lateral acceleration, not too far off from a T-Rex. The steering is precise and responds quickly to inputs. Since it doesn't weigh much, low speed maneuvers are a cinch. Out on the road you know exactly what's happening with the front wheels. There's excellent feedback. Much of its handling ability comes from a wide front track and plenty of rubber out back. That width actually makes the V13R about an inch wider than the new Corvette Z06. The brakes aren't powered and there's no ABS or any form of electronic stability control. Stopping power is perfectly proportional to the pressure you apply. Like the steering, the brakes are communicative and easy to operate. It doesn't take much effort to stop, even from higher speeds. Once pressure is applied, the four piston Willwood calipers are ready and willing to take speed off without hesitation. Even after repeated hard stops, the brakes never exhibited any fade. While there's a handful of wheel options available, the standard setup consists of 17-inch wheels in front and 205-45 tires, with a single 18-inch wheel and wide 295-35 tire in the rear. The V13R is born around a 1.5-inch tubular steel chassis with triangulated sidewalls and a frontal crash zone. Together it forms a solid structure for added protection. The body panels are made from fiberglass. There's large intakes across the lower side panels, even a snorkel positioned in between the roll bars that takes in additional air for cooling various components. Climbing in is a little easier than the T-Rex since you don't have to contort yourself around a roll cage. With the high sills, which were a necessity for added chassis rigidity, you basically step in and fall into the seat. Hoisting yourself out is perhaps the biggest challenge. The V13R is 42 inches tall at its highest point, 139 inches long overall, and rides on a 97.5 inch wheelbase. Overall width based on the front track is 78.5 inches, and at 5 foot 10 I still felt like I had great legroom. Obviously there's no issues with headroom. The most important thing to note when climbing in, just like the T-Rex, is to make sure you remove the steering wheel, otherwise it's hard to get your legs in just right. All you have to do is press a small release button, grab the collar behind it with both hands, and slide it off. To install it back once you're seated, simply place the wheel back on the column and rotate it slightly until it locks in place. The seating position is an instrumental part of this unique experience as you sip up mere inches off the ground with your torso tilted rearward and your legs stretched nearly horizontal in front of you. Along with an adjustable pedal box, the seats can be slid fore and aft by pulling up on a small release pin behind each headrest. The handbrake is controlled by a lever adjacent to your left leg. General ergonomics are good, especially with how simple everything is. The V13R felt a tad more comfortable as I think the padding was more substantial than the T-Rex I drove, but a lot of that is customizable. As far as storage, there's not a ton of it, but you do have a lockable glove box as well as a watertight compartment in front of the vehicle. The compartment is also removable. If you plan on taking it for an extended trip, I'd highly suggest opting for the travel package, which adds a pair of saddlebags that mount up on either side of the engine. Each bag has a carrying capacity of 1.6 cubic feet. Not only are they lockable, but they can even be removed if you wanted to take your stuff with you like a little suitcase. A special key is supplied with the bags to lock and unlock them. They offer a decent amount of space for clothes, toiletries, or any other relatively small necessities. So now let's go ahead and see as she sounds, both sitting still and on the road.
Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the Campania V13R. Be sure to stay tuned next time. Subscribe today. There's always a lot more where that came from. Take care, everyone.